Hi guys. Um, so I'm just going to show you some different ways of keeping a concertina, well, assembling them. So this, believe it or not, is my small concertina. I'll just get lots of different pages. I'll just quickly show you also, I've got a larger one, which is more difficult to see on the screen. I can't really move my camera, I'm afraid. But as you can see, it's a lot bigger. And it's a rectangular format, this one. Um, so these pages have slightly ripped, but this is what I kept at the Parado. I'll show you it in the class. Um, but it's, it's easier to show you on the smaller one, so that's what I'll do. Um, I also work in a square concertina as well. So I've got a small and a big, and then I've also got a square one. Um, it's really convenient, like working in these different scales. So, um, to assemble them, what I've got is some plywood board. Um, and for each book, I've obviously cut them into different sizes. So, um, for this one, it's um, 22 centimeters by 15 centimeters. And then the paper inside is sometimes, I work in quite a scruffy way, um, but the paper inside is usually folded to around um, 15 by 10. So it's when the outside edges are 22 centimeters for these small ones, and then 15 centimeters across. Um, I like to work within about five, usually around a five centimeter gap for the paper. What I'll do is um, I'll attach a little diagram for each of these. So it's usually around for the small ones, 22 centimeters by 15 centimeters. It's plywood board, so it's really thin. It's below like half a um, centimeter wide. So it's ply plywood. Um, is nice and aesthetic. They're beautiful little books and what I do is um, so I get the two pieces of board and then I get um, it's good to get like a, a lot of paper like you could cut up um, A1 sheets or you could get a roll from Casa Art. Um, so what I've done is I've cut strips of paper so it's 15 centimeters um, by 10 centimeters is the width for the 10 centimeters is where I'm going to fold it. So 15 centimeters and then 10 centimeters, and then I make a fold. Then 15 by 10. So you might want to get this quite exact, like your folding and everything. Like I work, as you know, quite a painterly, not always completely exact way. So it's 15, 10, 10 fold, 10 fold. Ten centimeters, another fold. And then what you might want to do is um, fold the paper both ways to make it really fluidly folded. Makes the sketchbook a bit less stiff. And then again. Okay, so what I've actually done is, you, what's good about getting a big roll from Cassar or something like that is that you can get it really long and then you just get it by 15 and then you make a straight line across. So if you're working with smaller paper, just get another strip. And to assemble them together, you, um, you might want to make a really 
small fold so I could actually tear that you might want to make it really exact by cutting it so it's just like a little fold at the end you might, might want to make it really slim this fold and then you glue it onto the next bit if that makes sense so you get some PVA that's a bit too much PVA we want to make it not too much not too gluey so just tiny bits of it you know you might want to make these really beautiful and exact so I don't blame you if that's how you want to work so this is just the small format that I'm showing the only difference with the bigger formats is that um, obviously the dimensions are just slightly bigger but the paper folding is the same so as you can see that joins together and you might want to um, you know you might want to get um, another few strips it depends how long you want the book to be um, so then what you do is you get I don't have the plywood the right size of me so this is obviously it um, in the plywood boards so you get the plywood boards in within like just a five centimeter bigger margin or it's quite a lot bigger here but try and make it maybe like five centimeters um, or just a few centimeters maybe like three centimeters or something through the borders um, so you can kind of get the idea and what I do is I just make just glue like one bit two bit three bit four bit the, like just a few tiny dabs and then I really press it in um, and I get all of the whole strip made of the paper however I make them really long personally um, and you might want to let the bits where you're connecting it to really glue into the surface so that it's binded well together. So I get quite a few bits of paper and then, you know, so it makes a really long chain of these folds. So it's, with a concertina, it's just like a fold that way and then a fold the, the other way, that way, the other way. Okay, so uh, then I glue it to that side. And then once I've finished the chain on the other side, I glue it to the other board so that it's like this. <laughs> so it's glued at that side. I've let it, I usually let them dry for quite a long time. Like I put a heavy weight over the surface so that it um, properly binds. Um, and then on this side as well, just like a, um, I press something down. So it's, quite an aesthetic thing. I obviously work in this kind of slightly uneven way but you might want to get it really exact so when you're um, cutting your strips of paper um, you might want to get a craft knife and a ruler and just really... Um, I quite often make little templates so because that's um, 15 centimeters um, I just sort of make this my template and then I get another bit of paper and do the same so that you can make it as long as you want so that's kind of the concertina thing you can also um, which is really aesthetic is that you can get some string and bind it together and what's so good about it is that it can become like a drawing board <laughs> like the plywood <laughs> which is amazing and before you start you might also what I do quite often is just collage in some papers like different surfaces um, to work on which is really fun um, so you just really prepare your paper as well. You know, you can make it really aesthetic, like get a string, bind it together. Um, so for, I like to have a square one, which I'll attach. Um, but this is my rectangular one. And this one is um, 35, 35 centimeters by, 23 centimeters um, so I've obviously got the two bits of plywood again um, and 
I don't know what this bit is. I think I took this one to Dumfries House, this concertina. The other one was also from Dumfries House, I think. <laughs> I did a residency there. So um, this one is, yeah, so it's 35 by 20, so 35 along the way and then 23 this way, which means that um, to make it smaller than 35 along the way, I've made the paper, which is obviously like, as you see, I don't always work in this really precise way so you might want to really align the paper which I'll show in the diagram so 35 along the way and then 30 so that's just a 2.5 centimeters maybe on each side um, and then because this is 23 centimeters along the way um, I'll show in the diagram it's the same thing as the smaller one um, so yeah, the plywood's 23 from corner to corner, which means that the paper will be um, 21 centimetres wide. And then you just do the same folding thing. So it's 30 centimetres long. I'll put it on the diagram, like, um, and it might want to be more <laughs> straight. So 30 centimetres along, um, 21 centimetres wide. So that means that it's... Um, yeah, it got a bit of a margin. And then um, I just make the folds um, with the paper. And I did use, I think, big rolls from Cassar. I don't know if it's still open during all the quarantine, like for rolls, it probably is. Um, so yeah, I just bind together lots of strips of this that's been cut into 30 by, and then 21 centimeters fold, 21 centimeters fold 21 centimeters fold and it's obviously just folding it the opposite ways and as you can see um, I've put in so many different surfaces um, and I just think it's a really legitimate kind of artist process to um, go inwards and like when you're preparing these books to um, really think about like the papers that you're working on um, you know, just to really, like, because if you have, like, a kind of interesting surfaces that you've already put in your book, it just means that, I don't know, like, you can just kind of work on top, and it, as we were talking about with Turner, like, how he uses surfaces, but, you know, Kiefer and those more conceptual artists, or, but they're actually very visual as well, like, um, you know, they're actually quite figurative, like, they collage in just different bits of paper, and it sort of, connects together like um so sometimes I'm preparing grounds and it just makes it feel like the book's flowing um so I think I've explained the concertina um enough and if you have any questions just let me know and what I'll do is I'll make um I'll just send the diagram as well okay right